Tesla having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad everything on pace for its worst ever month, quarter, and year. Joining us now to talk about what is going on is CFRA senior equity research analyst Garrett Nelson, who's got a buy rating on the stock and a $225 price target. Uh, Garrett, great to have you with us. Um, I assume at this point you stuck with your buy rating this whole time down. I mean, it's down 69 percent this year. You, I would assume you think it's closer to the bottom uh, at this point. What, what is the primary driver of this tremendous decline that we've seen in your view? Sure. Thanks for having me. So obviously there's been a lot of attention surrounding Tesla sell-off, but to be clear, this is a broader uh, EV sell-off. If you look at Tesla's competitors, uh, Rivian and Lucid, those stocks are down far more on a year-to-date basis than Tesla. So, um, you know, we think sentiment has really become overly negative, and uh, the recent sell-off has really been exacerbated by year-end tax loss selling, in our view. Um, but if you look at what happened yesterday, you know, Tesla lost over 11 percent of their market value in a single day yesterday. Um, and really, what news was there out there except that they're, gonna, they're planning to take little additional downtime at their Shanghai factory over the Chinese New Year in late January? And so we think it's, that's really overdone to see that kind of sell-off on that uh, type of news. You know, and by, by the way, their China factory is only one of uh, four factories that they're currently operating. So um, we think this is a, a, a really good buying opportunity following the recent sell-off. Uh, and, you know, what was remarkable about yesterday's sell-off was the volume behind that 11 percent decline. So it wasn't just, you know, strange light volume days ahead of the new year, Garrett. It was, th you know, three times the average daily volume over the past 30 days, which means that there's a lot of conviction in, in that in that decline. Um, what, you know, if you think that it's China mostly, that that, that bit of news behind the 11 percent, you know, once that gets better, I would think that that's something to look through. But then you still have the outstanding issue of Elon Musk's distraction, the possible damage to the to the Tesla brand, uh, the high interest rates, which Elon Musk himself uh, tweeted about. I mean, the Y and the three are, are some of the most financed SUVs, EUVs in the market, I should say, uh, at this point. These are things that don't necessarily go away, even if the China lockdown is solved. And we just heard from Dr. Scott Gottlieb earlier. He thinks that, you know, this could be waves and waves of COVID here, which could still be disruptive to the supply chain. Yeah, we think the pendulum has really swung too far in the direction of fear. And uh, there's really Tesla is not being given enough credit uh, for some potential positives that are ahead. Um, one is we think they could announce a buyback. They've alluded to that in the last few months. Uh, would likely be uh, in the magnitude of five to ten billion dollars. Uh, the company's balance sheet was recently upgraded to investment grade by S and P. So they're really in a lot different uh, situation than other automakers, given their balance sheet strength and free cash flow. And the other thing is that uh, their EVs, uh, the lower price version of versions of the Model Three and the Model Y, will become eligible for seventy five hundred dollar. Uh, federal EV tax credit uh, on January 1st. So next week, uh, those lower price versions will be available for, for the EV tax credit uh, because of the Inflation Reduction Act. And so, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, we don't think the market is focusing enough on those things. And, uh, you know, this sell-off is has really presented a compelling entry point. Right. That tax credit is huge. Uh, Garrett, great to speak with you. Thank you. Garrett Nelson. Thank you. When might it stop? Let's ask the star analyst Dan Ives. He covers Tesla shares for Wedbush, has an outperform rating, something it has not done lately, to say the least. Welcome. It's good to see you. It's stunning. I'm looking at it right now. It broke 110. Okay. It's going to finish below that today, barely hanging on to 109, nearly a 12% decline. I feel like we've had this conversation a lot lately, and every time we do, it's for several percentage points lower than the prior time we had the conversation. What in the world is going on here? Well, I think Musk set off the five alarm fire. You know, and that, that really started this in terms of the Twitter train wreck and, and what's really been a black eye for Musk and a black eye for Tesla. And now the demand, the second leg, demand's starting to soften in China. 
China, that's the hearts and lungs of the Tesla story. So right now, that one-two punch is really a perfect storm for Tesla stock. And I could tell you, institutional investors calling me are as white-knuckle nervous as I've seen them going back four or five years. Okay, so you're that. speaking to institutional investors who are calling you and saying, okay, Ives, you continue to tell me to buy the stock. i got to outperform on it. What should I do? What do you tell them? When it's like, where's the stock go? Like, so, so what stress test? Like, is it five dollars earnings power? Is it less? You know, could this ultimately go go lower? Could this trade seventy five, eight hours? They're That's asking like, you those questions, and, and those are the questions they're asking me because right now we're in basically uncharted territory because of a self-driven, what I view as a six hundred billion dollar mistake. When you combine all that, Musk really started here. Well, how low can it go? So look, we believe. Five dollars of earnings power is really even when you stress test it. Ultimately, I think where Tesla goes, you know, in terms of 2023, you look at units. Worst case, we think potentially 1.7 to 1.8 million in terms of where units could go. I think you're starting to get to a point here. You get to 95 to 100 hours. We start to get to a point where that is almost you are baking in that they will probably do four, four dollar, four fifty of earnings. So I think we start to get below a hundred. We start to get to you know what I view as extreme panic in the name. I mean, when when you have an outperform rating on the stock and it, and you have an outperform you know way up in the clouds, and you have an outperform as it comes back down to earth. People start to question your credibility on the name. I'm sure you're thinking about your reputation on this stock. How does that factor in how you're thinking about it today and whether that will cause you to change your rating on it simply because the goalposts seem to have moved? No doubt. And I can tell you in decades of covering tech stock, it's in nature. Going up, you're a hero. Going down, you know, obviously it continues to really be targeted on the back. I view it as... Is this a tra so this is what I asked them. Is this a transformational play on electric vehicles? Where today it's two and a half percent of the U.S. auto market. I believe it is. So I in you my, still believe it is. I, I, I still I truly believe that ultimately seventy percent of this sell-off is really Musk, Twitter train wreck driven rather than core fundamentals. Now, with that said, damage is done as we've talked about. Black eye. How do you ultimately start to regain your footing if they? What I believe could get to 35, 40 percent growth in a worst case going into next year. You talk about what could be five dollars earnings power. Then I think we look back in this period and believe they was way oversold on the downside. But no, no doubt, Scott, this is definitely what I view. It's a fork in the road. It's a moment of trust for Musk, uh, you know, in terms of where we are. But you're telling me of all the issues, right, the competition, the China shutdowns, Elon selling. It's the Twitter distraction that is the bulk of the selling. I didn't even mention the fact, the re-rating that stocks like this have taken in a non-zero interest rate environment. And this was one of the poster stocks that probably benefited greatly from zero interest rates and a frenzy in the market that happened as a result. A stock that probably never should have been $1.24 trillion in market cap at its peak. And the jury is out as to whether it should be where it is now, which is now smaller than a Walmart or an even J.P. Morgan. Yeah, and I do, I do believe it, even though we have obviously the macro, multiple compression, everything else. If you look at the must Twitter situation, he did what no short could do, no bear, no conspiracy theory, self-driven. The $44 billion ultimately led to what could be another five to $600 billion, and that's why this is going to go down as just a historically horrific move for Musk that now he needs to course correct. Otherwise, this is just going to continue to fast. What does that mean, course correct? I mean, I was, what stops the selling? What does he need to do? Well, I think there's three things. One, a CEO of Twitter in the first two weeks of January, that's, that's truly a CEO, not just a figurehead and a yes person. Two, is that to actually with the board as well coming out with, in terms of not selling stock, not just saying it, because that's the boy that cried wolf, actually saying he's not going to ultimately sell stock and putting some actually paper behind okay, it. Let me, let me ask you this, okay, because he just recently said that he's not going to sell anymore for the, you know, the, what, the foreseeable future. I think we can say. Do you believe him? Well, it's a Pinocchio moment because ultimately he's said it many times, continue to sell. Now, board does have to get involved and there has to be at least a 10 b 5 plan. There needs to be something so investors understand what the goalposts are with selling. And the third, they need to come out with guidance, rip the Band-Aid off. Don't give lofty numbers. They're going to have to continue to cut. If they do those three things, then the stock ultimately bottoms. 
Our next guest thinks investors should brace for more pain at Tesla, but there's a long-term bull case to be made. Gene Munster is managing partner at Loop, and he joins us on the fast line tonight. Gene, great to have you with us. What part of this goes away in terms of, you know, the COVID situation in China and the Shanghai um, factory getting back up and running? And, and what part of this is just a, a more fundamental story about people not wanting to buy Tesla's and Elon Musk's image being tarnished and Elon Musk being distracted at Twitter? I think probably 80 percent of it goes away ultimately. Uh, you all met some of this vortex of negativity, Musk and Twitter discounts, Shanghai shut down, used car price in the macro, all this. All these, I think, are transitory. I think that there still is some near term, and specifically very near term, is the market's going to be on pins and needles related to Tesla until January 1st when the December delivery is about. The December deliveries are going to not capture uh, the piece that, of the discounting. Seven percent discounting might not sound like much for the month of December, but that's going to impact profitability. And so you're going to have the. Uh, I think you'll see a sigh of relief on the delivery number near term, and then all of a sudden investors start to get nervous about what they're going to report in three or four weeks around the earnings. So we're not out of this. Uh, that's why I talk about brace for uh, more negativity, especially given the temperature of the market and it's a risk-off market. But I, I would ultimately come back to this question, is, um, and I forget which uh, of the panelists talked about this today, but is this a tech company or a car company? And I think that, to me, is the bigger question. If you think it's a car company, you shouldn't own it. Uh, this means that they're going to have uh, minimal market share, that their margins will go away, that other companies are going to catch up to them. If you think they have some sort of competitive tech advantage around manufacturing, whether it's FSD, batteries, um, that uh, will yield higher margins than typical, and there's a massive um, a market that they're getting into. So, Melissa, 80% of this is a vortex over the next month. I think the bigger question investors should be asking here is, is this a car or a tech company? If you believe it's a tech company, I think you should own it here, despite what the, the stock is trying to tell us. I think long term it goes higher. Yeah, that, that question has been the uh, sort of the existential <laughs> question facing all investors for some time when it comes to this stock, Gene. But if you think that 80% of the problems for Tesla uh, dissipate, how much of the market cap returns? How much of the multiple comes back? I, I think if you think about 2023 and into 2024, I think, um, you know, this, this isn't a, a stock recommendation, but I think that a lot of it does come back. It's, it's right now, it's trading at two and a half times revenue, that number. <clears throat> I think Apple's good comp on the services, hardware, that integration revenue. Apple's trading five times right now. So I think you can kind of retrace. It's not going to get Apple's multiple, but you can retrace some of that gap. And um, I think, uh, you know, it, it, essentially what investors need to see is pretty straightforward. They need to see the delivery numbers. They need to see the profit numbers. We're a month away from getting both of those. I think once uh, we get those and it shows that the, the line is still intact about the adoption curve, I think that the multiple can, can have uh, some form of a rebound. Hey Gene, it's Steve. So I'm going to ask I'm going to ask you what Melissa asked us. What, what do you think in three years out? Would you rather Apple or Tesla three years out? I would say Apple, and the reason is I'm um, um, I mean to this idea that Apple is going to get into the car business. I think uh, Mark Herman from Bloomberg does a great job of covering this, and he's been spot on. He, uh, if you read his his published work, he thinks they're going to do a car. If uh, I'm not willing to say that right now, but if they do get into the car business, that probably has a positive impact. I mean, they could double their revenue over the next 10 years based on the car business. And you probably have some sort of competitive pressure on Tesla. So I think both of these are going higher. Um, it sounds like out of touch with reality, reason to own Apple. Uh, I think they have business, but I still think they're getting into segments that are far from uh, priced into Apple shares right now. Gene, just quickly, because we're out of time, um, if Elon Musk reduces his role at Tesla, maybe becomes chairman or something along those lines, does the stock go higher? Yes, I think it does, just for the simple fact. It's reassuring to investors that he's putting his attention. I think that just uh, helps investors sleep well at night. Investors sleep well at night, multiples go up. All right. Gene, great to have you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Gene Munster, Loop Ventures. Thank you. I need no nuts. Stephen Kress, creator of Seeking Alpha's stock picking system. 
Seeking Alpha, all you need to know about investing in top stocks or in anything else. Seeking Alpha, be a better investor.